So it's kind of a mess right now. We have all these watches, the warnings out there. All of us, if you're watching us right now, you're under a tornado watch until 9. That means conditions are favorable for tornadoes to form with some of these thunderstorms that are on the severe side. This line right here has had wind gusts over 60 miles per hour. That's going to continue pushing into our area. Already seen some of those warnings pop up for our inland areas. And there's also, looks like severe thunderstorm warning now for uh, parts of Tattnall County. This goes into Evans County and then a little bit of Candler County here. So it's going to turn into sort of a mess of lines, but you need to one, Stay weather aware this evening. This would be a good evening if you have the option. Maybe just kind of hang out inside and we'll guide you through some of these storms. But some of them may be uh, having you take some action if it's tornado warning like we have uh, down in Evans County right now. Farther to the west, northern Montgomery and Toombs County. Looks like you were just added to that severe thunderstorm warning. And that is for the potential of winds around 60 miles per hour or greater. So let's check in again with our tornado warn storm. We can do a little bit of analysis. Looks like that is sliding its way uh, ever so slightly now off to kind of the east of Claxton, but this would put it right over about Daisy now. Uh, so there's Daisy, so just east of that. If you're on Sunbury Road, that's basically where the rotation is at right now and it is traveling its way off to the northeast. And this was a fairly quick mover, right around 50 miles per hour. The tornado warning itself goes until 530. So this will be headed in its way into Bullock County, uh, northern, uh, maybe a little uh, bit of like Liberty, northern Bryan County. Uh, for the most part though, it's uh, going to be headed uh, pretty quickly off to the north and the east. So our uh, traditional sort of radar look here, and once we back this out, a little bit more, you'll be able to see uh, this is not the only game in town, so to speak. We have our tornado warning here. So there it is, just that little bit of Liberty County, Northern Bryan County, Bullock County, and then farther down the road, we're starting to get, get into more populated areas. So we'll see how this evolves, but we'll have Guyton, Rinkin, and Springfield in Effingham County. You're not included in the tornado warning right now. Uh, but certainly uh, we will keep you updated on that. And let's uh, continue to sort of back the view out here because we have a tornado warning now just to the north of Montgomery County. That is right on I-16. Uh, additional thunderstorms down to our south are developing. And of course, uh, just a little hit or miss shower at the coastline. So the coastline to I-95, not a lot going on for maybe the next one or two hours. But if you are well inland, you need to be prepared for this line of pretty dangerous thunderstorms that is continuing uh, to move across the area. Look at all these severe weather warnings lined up down there. And this one right here uh, does include the part of Jeff Davis County, and that is for the stronger straight line winds that could be upwards of about 60 miles per hour. So if we uh, want to loop this and just uh, give you an idea kind of how quickly this is moving, we mentioned this cell right here that prompted the tornado warning is a fast mover. It's moving northeast uh, right around about 50 miles per hour. So we'll put a storm track on that and we can pause this for you and let everyone in the path of the tornado warn storm know. And uh, Melissa, can you just take a look there? It looks like they put a tornado warning. I just want to make sure it does not touch Hampton County. Uh, we'll uh, go northeast at 50 miles per hour. And this tornado warn storm, obviously it's uh, basically over or right near Daisy at this second. So let's go ahead now around the southward area at 515, Aikens at 526, Guyton at 541, and that's if the storm would hold together and sort of continue on this northeasterly trek and Springfield at about 547. Now farther inland, what we want to do is sort of uh, put a little timeline on this entire squall line here where some of the worst of the weather is and this may be moving around about 50 to 60 miles per hour and this is moving uh, generally more in an easterly direction so it's going to cover a wide swath of southeast Georgia with the potential for winds 60 miles per hour or higher in our storm tracker radar network has that near Vidalia at 516 Metter at 533 we continue on the storm tracks Statesboro 
around 549 and Sylvania at about 552. So did you find out any more on the uh, potential for a tornado warning in Hampton County? Okay, so the area I just circled and will point to right in there, if there is a tornado, it is very likely in that area. So that would be almost on that Allendale and Hampton County line or probably more likely just to the north of there. And you said that warning goes uh, about how long? Okay, so that one goes until 515. So we have just kind of a whole mess of uh, warnings that are going to be across our entire area. So what we're going to do is we head through probably the next two or three hours. We are going to have additional tornado warnings issued. And what we will do is with our storm analysis, our weather team here, we're really going to try to zero in on the ones that are most life threatening or uh, potentially dangerous across our area. So this one right here, there it is, as Melissa mentioned, tornado warning that includes a little bit here of Hampton County until 515. Uh, and then another, uh, that same tornado warning here. So it looks like they started it in this area and now they've expanded it off to the north and the east. So what I wanna do is we're going to uh, head back down because uh, I mentioned the one a uh, little bit farther down here uh, that's uh, going to start approaching a little more heavily populated area if it would hold together is the one that moved uh, basically between or near Claxton and Daisy down in Evans County. So we have the tornado warning there and that's uh, all locations here within these red lines. It does include Pembroke, this part of Bullock County. And did we have an update on the movement there? It was pretty quick mover earlier at about 50 miles per hour. Okay, so we think uh, this is the vicinity where there would be a little bit of rotation about to exit Evans County. And then pretty soon I think we'll be able to give that little slice of Northern Liberty County the all clear. What we'll have to watch though is the Northern area of Bryan County. You're going to be uh, kind of right on the edge of this with far Southern areas of Bullock County. But also if you're traveling, commuting anywhere here along this stretch of I-16, that's probably not advised until we get this uh, tornado warning out of our area. And we can do our storm tracks on this with the shear. And it has strengthened just a little bit now. So what we're doing is trying to look in the atmosphere to see where some of this rotation is at. And uh, there it is. It may cross into northern areas of Bryan County. So if you're in the Pembroke area, I certainly advise you to be taking your tornado precautions right now. Do the same in the southern area of Bullock County. And then we have to watch this so closely if you're into Effingham County because uh, that's the direction that it will be headed or tracking towards next. And if we happen to get uh, really any type of severe weather reports relayed from the National Weather Service, we'll let you know first. And also we can plot those on our map here and uh, really continue our storm analysis. Remember earlier when we were on the air, a uh, tornado directly hit Allendale South Carolina, we've had a number of damage reports come in from that. And also on uh, Twitter did see a video of that tornado. It was from a distance, but certainly uh, the National Weather Service has been able to provide a uh, confirmation with that. We're going to head back to our wider view here because we have a lot going on across the area. That little piece of Hampton County, I think most of that storm uh, with the tornado warning stays north of you this go around. Uh, this one right here, still for Evans, Northern Bryan, and also into Southern Bullock County, tornado warning till 530. But we're just looking at this big perspective here that this line of storms 
is uh, pretty dangerous. It's had a lot of embedded circulations with the potential for a tornado to form at any time. Uh, we've already had a confirmation of a tornado in far northern areas of the low country during the late afternoon. And of course, we're still watching uh, this rotation here, and it looks like it may be tightening up here just a little bit. So we're going to uh, get laser focused on that. Uh, looks like our uh, rotation uh, indicator started to pop on here. And that's usually uh, indicating not only rotation, sometimes kind of the precursor to an actual tornado. So right now, it's just radar indicated, and it's about to cross over Highway 280. These little dots that you see here, if you're curious about that, those are lightning strikes. So to me, this is probably a strengthening thunderstorm. We're starting to see more lightning. The overall structure of it with this uh, sort of hook feature down here, uh, definitely a little bit more pronounced. And if there is a tornado uh, with this storm, uh, let's move this up just a little bit, it would probably be in this vicinity right here. So we're really stressing, we're starting to uh, see the storm move over areas that would be a little more prone to some evening commuters, northern Bryan County, uh, southern areas of Bullock County. Anyone that commutes uh, maybe Georgia Southern back to Savannah would go right through this along I-16 here shortly, and then it would head towards Effingham County. Let's take a look outside right now, and this is from the Brooklet area, which is in Bullock County. So we are tracking a tornado warning right now. Goes until 530, and the worst of the weather is about to move into this uh, extreme northern part of Bryan County. Right here is the southern area of Bullock County, and then it would be moving into Effingham County. So we're definitely starting to see these, this particular storm track towards an area that is a little more heavily populated. Uh, let's take a look at the radar winds within this because that's always kind of the key, and yeah, that has definitely strengthened. So uh, I would hope no more strengthening, otherwise we'll probably uh, start to see reports of uh, if there's any law enforcement or trained weather spotters out here the potential of a tornado on the ground. It's radar indicated right now, but with our live chat with the National Weather Service, we'll keep it up to date because this is certainly uh, showing some signs of strengthening. We can go back to our kind of our rotation marker here. Uh, there it is, that general path about to cross over 280. Uh, maybe staying just to the west of the Pembroke area. You certainly should be taking your tornado precautions though and then heading uh, closer to I-16. So once it gets to I-16, that's uh, uh, kind of a, a landmark we'll watch because then after that, uh, it would be headed into that sort of eastern part of Bullock County and then into Effingham County. So uh, let's uh, back this out just a little bit and we can put some storm tracks on this once again. Um, because I want everyone uh, that's in the path of this storm to have a good idea what's coming. Melissa, did you say this is still probably around uh, about 50 miles per hour? Yes, last movement that they've given us was northeast at 50 miles an hour. Okay, and once we back the radar view out here, it is a bit messy out there. Let's just put this into motion here quickly before we put a storm track on because all of this, which is strong or severe thunderstorms in an entire line, starting to approach Vidalia, Lyons, Santa Claus, down towards Hazelhurst, Denton, I would say Baxley you'll be up very soon, Elma, uh, and down around Douglas County in Georgia. Those are all locations that could have stronger straight line winds of 60 miles per hour or greater start to approach here within uh, the next few minutes to about the next 45 minutes. This line uh, is a pretty quick mover. Uh, notice in this area right here, it almost looks like it's starting to bow out. And there's also a couple tornado warnings. So please, if you're in Metter, uh, Statesboro, and also Sylvania, watch this part of the line very closely. And obviously that's our job, we'll be doing that for you. But if you have to leave home for a couple minutes, I uh, may want to get back quickly just because there have been some rotations within that line that have prompted tornado warnings. So obviously what we are most concerned with right now is the potential for uh, a tornado across uh, maybe northern areas of Bryan County into southern Bullock County. And let's go zoom in down there. Once again, let's see if we can. Oops, uh, let's see if we can move this just a, a little, a little bit here for you. Uh, there's Statesboro. Looks like a thunderstorm just moved over your area, and also uh, potentially zoom this out a little bit, and we can uh, get a little better idea of where this is tracking. So we'll put our 
marker on this. And northeast uh, around about 50 miles per hour would bring this towards Hubert at 537. Guyton at 544, Springfield into Effingham County, 551, and this uh, Haydenville area at 558. So that is the uh, latest track. Again, these are pretty quick movers, and I don't think they're really going to be slowing down a whole lot this evening. And this is uh, really the first time this entire year we've had some severe weather risk, but this is definitely... Uh, been our most elevated one and the one with uh, really the most potential to produce some sort of damaging uh, winds or even tornadoes across our area. Uh, that circulation uh, definitely becoming a little more pronounced now and this will be approaching I-16. We can put our uh, little measuring tool on this here. We think if there's a tornado it's about in that area and moving to the northeast. So it's 12 miles southwest right now of I-16. So if you're in this general vicinity, southern Bullock County, northern Bryan County, uh, if you're in the Pembroke area, uh, this circulation is going to get ever so close to you. Please, please take your tornado precautions. And if at any moment we get confirmation from uh, whether it be the National Weather Service or storm spotters, uh, we need to zero in on this. This is starting to uh, look a little, definitely a little more impressive. There could potentially be uh, a tornado on the ground or uh, very close to southward or approaching the Pembroke area. Uh, Melissa, keep uh, close tabs on any updates from the National Weather Service. This looks a lot like what we saw with uh, the radar signature that was near Allendale. So, all right, uh, let's take a look at this. I didn't quite hear where this camera was located, but um, so this is in, uh, this is, this is in uh, Bullock County there. You can see uh, Northside Drive. So uh, just a little bit of rain in that area. If we have any cameras that might be uh, around the Pembroke area, let's try to get those uh, dialed in or something on I-16 into either northern Bryan County or maybe into the southern part of Bullock County. Uh, to me, this is extremely concerning, though, to see this uh, uh, type of feature starting to show up. It's a little bit messy right now with the velocity, but if there is a tornado, it's uh, probably somewhere in this vicinity of Highway 280. Uh, could be approaching Pembroke, uh, also moving its way up to the north here. And I would say this, uh, let's see what the, some of these roads are right here. We can get a little bit closer in. So there's Highway 280. Um, I would say this uh, beautiful Zion Church Road uh, could be very near to uh, where the tornado is located right now. Again, it's radar indicated, but we're um, really uh, seeing that circulation tighten up just a bit. Uh, Colin Floyd Road down towards uh, Letcher Road, and right here's 280, here's Pembroke. So if you're in any of these locations, uh, please be taking your tornado precautions. Uh, we'll zoom this out here because it looks like the, oops, the uh, radar just updated. And we'll give you the very latest. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's not a radar signature I like to see because that, uh, to me, looks like there could be a tornado on the ground right now. Uh, pretty obvious um, signature right here where we have our supercell thunderstorm, lots of lightning with that. Could be maybe P to dime size hail in this area, blinding rain. And then right here, uh, let's get right to it and show you where this is at. We think in this area right here is where the tornado would be located, uh, basically on to Highway 280 now. And this is going to continue its trek to the northeast. I'm going to toss it uh, to Melissa here in just a second. She has the uh, National Weather Service chat uh, directly in front of her. So if you want to just go over, because they've been updating this along the way, the tornado warning and kind of the latest on it. Yeah, that tornado warning, the very latest on it is it's going to be for portions of Evans into Liberty County. Now, that one was actually canceled. So the one we're watching right now has been continued for Brian Bullock and Effingham until 530. Now, this one is also capable of producing that tornado near Pembroke, moving east at 25 miles an hour. This is going to, like we said, remain in effect until 530 as it continues moving east with that um, radar indicated rotation. This is going to impact not only Pembroke, but Lanier, Brooklyn, Blickton, Denmark, Leefield, Bay, Groveland, 
Oh, we do have a traffic cam right now that we're okay. going to pull up in Pembroke. All right. Um, you can keep going, Melissa. Ashlyn, just let me know where this one's at. It kind of cuts off here. Let's keep it up because look at how windy it is right now. Look at those. Um, those okay, this is state, state Route 119, and it is in Bryan County. So uh, look at those traffic lights uh, shaking around. Uh, let's kind of leave this uh, split screen up. It looks like that camera froze. Hopefully it'll uh, pop back up here in just a second. Now that is a live look from Pembroke. Now it's also going to be affecting folks that are on I-16 right now. This is that evening commute time. So things could get dicey for you out there on the interstate, specifically between mile markers 126 and 147. So if you know anyone who is out on the road coming home on their evening commute, or maybe they had gone out to run some errands, if this is the area that they're in, make sure you get a hold of them because they need to be taking cover now with that radar in indicated rotation. Okay. And I am getting um, some confirmation in from uh, sort of what we know already earlier. And I'm starting to see some visuals, a lot of trees down up in that Allendale area in South Carolina. And it sounds like uh, there's uh, a lot of roads up in that area that may be impassable just from um, some trees that were knocked down as that tornado went through. But what we're looking at right now in our storm tracker radar network is uh, definitely the, the potential there for a tornado that could be uh, right around the uh, Pembroke area. And I'm going to hop back on screen and we'll do a lot of uh, storm analysis here. I was just trying to uh, pop over to social media. So once these storms pass your area, uh, please give us a heads up here at WJCL 22 and uh, let us know uh, sort of what you experienced as the storms went by your area. But again, uh, if you're in the path of these uh, potentially tornadic storms, please, please, please be taking your tornado precautions. So right in this area here, where you see this hook feature right in there is where there would very likely be a tornado. And again, we're kind of waiting on the confirmation, but a radar signature does not get more sort of classic with this hook feature than what we're looking at uh, right here. So we can do a few different things. We talked about our rotation earlier. Uh, this is almost as strong as the rotation we had when an actual tornado was on the ground near Allendale, South Carolina earlier. So if you're in Pembroke, please uh, be in the safest spot of your home as possible. Take your tornado precautions uh, this second. Uh, debris, are we seeing any of that? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Earlier it was so clear and easy to see around Allendale. We picked it out just like that. Um, uh, this is an area I'm a little bit concerned about. Sometimes uh, we look for those uh, sort of darker uh, blue signatures, something that uh, jumps out at us. So we'll watch that closely. We'll readdress that a little bit later. The velocity, uh, certainly somewhere uh, in this general vicinity right here is where the tornado would very likely be located. So what we can do now is uh, we pretty much identify that there's a good chance there could be a tornado on the ground is we'll back our view out here and um, sort of just move this down a little bit and then we'll uh, take a closer look at the storm track. So again, northern Bryan County, that southern area of Bullock County, and I firmly believe if this uh, sort of holds together, we're going to be looking at a tornado warning that will include Guyton, Springfield, and uh, maybe even Rankin could be on the edge of that. So that would be occurring, again, if this storm right here would hold together. We'll put a track on this. I'm going to do the squall, even though uh, we can really focus in on that. I'm going to sort of put this through here in case the uh, tornadic part of the storm would move, but it's going about 50 miles per hour. Uh, off to a northeast direction, and that would put areas like Pembroke pretty much uh, about right now. It is just on your doorstep. Areas like Pinora at 545, Springfield at 554, Berryville at 559. Again, these are big assumptions if this storm would hold together, and Ridgeland at 618. So uh, we just got a new scan in here, and that uh, d definitely does not look any better than the last one. And when I say better, I'm saying I wish it would weaken because we do not want to see uh, any more damage across our area. But that's a, uh, a rotation that has uh, definitely strengthened a little bit. So there's Pembroke. So I mentioned when I showed that storm track, it's pretty much right on top of you at the second. You can see uh, on the north side of towns where that circulation, uh, for the most part, would be located. We can go back to the uh, radar and take a look here. This is a, probably a developing hail core in this area. 
uh, where we have this little, uh, almost a ball looking thing right there, that would be where the tornado would be located. And with our shear tracks, we saw that that rotation was strengthening and it was about to move almost right over Pembroke. So uh, we may be starting to see some damage reports come in if indeed there was a tornado because it's over a uh, populated area now. Next up will be I-16, which is right in here. There could be just some absolutely nasty travel going on right now in northern Bryan County into southern Bullock County because that is just a wall of rain and likely some hail mixed into it. So this tornado warning again is going to continue and I think pretty soon they have to issue a tornado warning for FNM County. We need to uh, get the message out there and let all our friends around Guyton towards Springfield know uh, that if this does hold together, there's pretty good rotation, that this will be into FNM County. So, um, all right, that camera you're looking at there is by I-16 and exit 137. For sure there is very heavy rain in the kind of the middle of the screen there. Um, you can see there's a tree shaking around and I don't know if that's hail hitting the camera or just so much rain that it's splashing back up. But either way, uh, visibility is uh, fairly low. So hopefully uh, people are going extremely slow as they travel through uh, this area of uh, Bullock County right there and then into Effingham County, so Pembroke area. I would say give this another five minutes or so and that uh, potential tornado circulation would be off to your east, but I would not be surprised one bit if we start to get some damage reports coming in from northern Bryan County. This is a pretty uh, signature look to the radar in terms of a uh, actual tornado that would be on the ground. And we can take a look at the debris runs again. For what area? Brian Bullock, Chatham, Effingham, and Jasper. Okay. Until 615. All right. Um, let's back the view out here. And I think, did you say uh, Chatham County as well? Yes, sir. Now, this is a confirmed tornado was located over Lanier, moving east at 45 miles an hour. Okay. All right. So we now have this moving to the east at 45 miles per hour. This does include part of Chatham County. So it looks like it cuts right along. Uh, here's I-16, 95, and then almost follows 16 there, uh, very close to the 516 interchange. That is sort of the southern extent of it, and then it goes up to the door. So Pooler, you're included. I would say Garden City, Port Wentworth, Rankin in the tornado warning, Springfield in the tornado warning, Guyton, you're included in the tornado warning. And this goes until what time did you say? 6.15 p.m. Okay, all right, we're hearing the uh, alerts go off in our newsroom right now. So what we wanna do is uh, with that new warning, let's just put the warnings on here for you right now. Uh, if you're down into that Northern Bryan County, Southern Bullock County area, tornado warning until 5.30. The one that includes parts Chatham County and Effingham County will go until 6.15. So if you're down here on, uh, let's say, the southern side of uh, Chatham County, it looks like they have a severe thunderstorm warning down there. So I'll let you, uh, Melissa, uh, take a look at that. We're gonna focus in because this uh, tornado warden storm is going to start heading towards uh, some more heavily populated areas here in just a moment. And certainly if there's any other tornado warnings farther inland, uh, by all means, let me know the second you do. All right, let's go in here. Uh, FNM County, uh, northern areas right now of Bryan County and southern Bullock County. Those are basically uh, ground zero for what is very likely a tornado on the ground. You can see our tornado indicators here. We think it is in this uh, vicinity right here. Let's point to it. If there's a tornado on the ground, uh, uh, we think it's uh, right in that area. Our velocity will give us a little x-ray of the storm. That's pretty much about the same type of rotation that we had earlier when that tornado went right through the Allendale area. And we've seen uh, quite a bit of tree damage, uh, a little bit of structural damage has been reported. And so far, uh, we're kind of waiting for the confirmation if this is uh, actually on the ground in and around Pembroke, but this is pretty strong rotation now that we're starting to see. And this is going to continue its track off to, did you say the northeast around 50 miles per hour? Yeah, that's moving east at 45, and we do have confirmation that the tornado is located over Pembroke as it continues that movement. Okay, so yes, that just made its way again right over the Pembroke area and moving east at 45? Yes. 
Okay, so 45 miles per hour. So what we want to do, since we just had this uh, sort of issued for the uh, Chatham County area, is give everyone in Effingham and Chatham County a uh, heads up of where the storm is tracking next. And again, we're going to focus a little bit wider here. The rotation is right there. So let's draw this in 45 miles. Oops. Let's clear that out. 45 miles per hour off to uh, more of an east, a little bit northeast direction there. And again, that would be our best estimate of the circulation and where it's going to be moving. And that would put this storm near Black Creek at 536, Eden about 543, and Port Wentworth right around 6 p.m., Hardyville at 606. So again, we're outside of the warning, but as much lead time with this as possible is our goal here. Bluffed in 624. That is if this holds together. So remember uh, our track here a little more east than northeast this time around. Uh, but anywhere within these red lines that you see here that go into Effingham County, uh, parts of Jasper County are included, Chatham County, northern Bryan County, and that little bit there of southeastern Bullock County. Those are the areas of greatest concern. Okay, uh, we're thinking there's probably a tornado on the ground um, based to, okay, the what have? Police have confirmed. Okay, so police have observed a tornado on the ground and that was uh, very near Pembroke. Um, and this is uh, going to continue its way off to the east. So let's get out of the debris tracker for um, this second. We can give you a little better indication. And this is very strong rotation now that we're seeing. Uh, okay, so this is our, our live camera. Uh, you're looking at this live in Pembroke right now. Uh, it does look like there's uh, been debris thrown. Um, we look at, uh, there's tree limbs down there. Um, I don't, that trailer in the distance is not tipped over, but we don't know exactly kind of where we're at. This is Highway 280, so what's that say? Inner, did that say, what did that say back there, that sign? Okay, so, so far we're seeing a lot of tree damage. Um, looks like people have now gone outside. And while you look at the live pictures, again, a tornado just hit along Highway 280 in the Pembroke area. Our rotation tracker, this dangerous, potentially life-threatening storm is continuing to move through northern Bryan County. If you are in Effingham County, Guyton, Rinkin, Springfield, also into northern areas of Chatham County, Port Wentworth, Pooler, and I would say even Garden City. You need to be taking your tornado precautions. You're looking at live pictures right now. And again, uh, if you've ever been storm chasing or just had a bad storm move through your area, uh, everyone right after it hits is a little bit disoriented. You go outside and it doesn't quite look like it used to. Uh, some of the trees are, uh, looks like they've been uh, broken, thrown around. There's some debris on the ground. Uh, that structure looks okay right there. Uh, you can definitely see across this uh, field right here, there's been some debris thrown. Those trees in the distance, uh, looks like they've been shredded there just a little bit. Um, so certainly that storm, uh, you can almost see right through those uh, pine trees there, the trees in the distance, um, like a, a tornado just went right through that area. So again, this is uh, the Pembroke area. We do have a confirmation of a tornado that hit there. That tornado is continuing right now in northern areas of Bryan County. It's moving to the east at 45 miles per hour. I think this was... Uh, um, uh, definitely not a, a super weak tornado, and no, uh, you don't want to say any tornado's weak, but they go on a scale from a zero up to a five, and certainly some of the damage we're looking at here could at least be an, e, an EF1. We'll have to see uh, what we have for um, structural damage, but a lot of trees are topped in that area. Our severe weather threat is so far from over this evening. We have team weather coverage. So, Melissa, the second you see any new tornado warnings being issued, um, please let me know. So we're going to leave our live cam up as long as it's going to show you the damage. But also, uh, this is a life-threatening situation now. We know there's been a confirmed tornado. Uh, it's very likely still on the ground. So we're going to continue to um, sort of zoom in here to show you where some of the worst of the weather conditions are at. And this is just almost as a meteorologist, your heart sinks a little bit because you've seen the confirmation. The radar signature is 
almost identical where you have uh, this classic hook feature here and the tornado is very likely just continuing to churn its way through this area of northern Bryan County. So right here is I-16, I believe that's a debris marker that we have right there. And we can probably pick out some of the debris now. Uh, right there, right there in uh, northern Bryan County radar indicating debris being thrown aloft. And we just showed you the visuals. We were the uh, first station to show you a live cam minutes after the tornado hit in Pembroke. So WJCL 22, if you have friends or family, please have them uh, turn us on right now. We're going to keep you safe through this entire storm. Uh, the radar signature right now, uh, this, the tornado we think is still on the ground and at the moment it's starting to approach I-16. So tornado very likely in this area, uh, anywhere from two to three miles away from I-16, but again, the radar scan, it might take one or two minutes to update from when that sort of beam goes out from the radar, it comes back, data is ingested. So this could actually be a little more in this direction. We think a tornado is about to cross over I-16 in the uh, very northern areas of Bryan County. Melissa, are you getting any more um, damage reports coming in? No, the latest we have is from the fire department over in Pembroke confirming that they did see the tornado. It was just east of Bryan County Elementary's playground to put that in perspective for you near okay. um, Camilla Drive. All right, and again, uh, what you're looking at there on the left is, is in Pembroke. That is tornado damage. Confirmed tornado has hit uh, in Pembroke. So our uh, storm chasers, what they do is they check in with our team of meteorologists. Um, they stay in communication with us and we send them uh, to an area. One, we wanna make sure they are always safe along with you. But then two, we wanna put them in a spot where we can get the visuals out to you as soon as possible. So we said go on I-16 to around the Evans County area. And look at that. That's uh, basically where the storm is tracked from Evans County now into Northern Bryan County and into Southern Bullock County. So what we will do here, uh, let's move this down just a little bit and focus in a little bit more because I want to make sure everyone's seen uh, some of the areas that we're over right now. So here's I-16. Right there is I-16. Um, looks like this is El Dorado Road, Highway 280 and 80. Oh, that is uh, definitely structural damage right now. And um, that is in the Pembroke, that is in, uh, that is in the Pembroke area. So Melissa, can you go over for one second um, uh, just the latest in the, uh, what's going on uh, with this uh, tornado warning? We're gonna keep this double screen up here. Absolutely. Um, we are getting reports right now that tornado sirens are going off in Pooler, and here is why. We do have that confirmed tornado that was located over Pembroke moving east at 45 miles an hour. Now, this is that tornado warning is going to encompass several areas. It's going to have portions of Bryan County, Bullock County, Effingham County, Chatham, and into Jasper. This goes all the way until 6.15 p.m. Now, Law enforcement has confirmed this tornado, so now is the time to be taking your precautions. This is going to be located near, we just mentioned how Pooler has those sirens going off. Well, Springfield also needs to be taking those precautions. Savannah International Airport, it's going to be near there as well. And if you're out on the interstate or you know someone, this is evening commute time for a lot of folks. If their commute goes on I-16 between mile markers 132 to 159, another area we're watching is going to be on I-16 between mile markers 7 and 9. And this cell, unfortunately, it is rather large like we mentioned, so it's also going to go up to I-95 in South Carolina between mile markers 2 and 13 and and then on I-95 in Georgia between mile markers 101 and 112. Now, to repeat, a tornado is on the ground. Now is the time to take cover. We like to tell people to duck that acronym. Go downstairs. If you are in, you're looking at a structure right there that's multiple stories. If you're in a structure that isn't just one floor, go down to that lowest level. Get underneath something that is sturdy. Take cover and keep away from windows. Okay, um, I just stepped off for one second. We're uh, kind of regrouping out in our newsroom on a couple things. But Pardon? as Melissa was mentioning here, 
Uh, dangerous situation right now. Sirens are ongoing in Bryan, Chatham, uh, into Effingham County. So if you're around Springfield, you're going to have very likely a just sheet of rain starting to come down uh, right now. That is uh, not the tornado itself. You're on the northern part um, of the storm. And again, we're doing a split screen here because we had a tornado just go along, I believe it was 280, and the damage you're looking at right now is in the Pembroke area. Okay, perfect. Let's move this down. Uh, so areas in the path of the storm, I, I was out of the room, Melissa. What did you say for uh, movement right now? This storm is moving east at 45 miles an hour. Okay, we think the rotation now is uh, about to exit Bryan County and about 45 miles per hour. Uh, we'll take this and we'll add some more locations in here. And again, this is where we're estimating the rotation to be and the potential time of it. Rinkin, there it is, about 555, 606 in Hardyville, 618 in Jasper, 623 in Bluffton, and if it would hold together, make it to the coastline, we think maybe that onshore sort of sea breeze or southeasterly wind would knock this down a little bit at the coastline. Um, but as of right now, if this held together, it would get a little bit closer to from Jasper into coastal Beaufort County. Um, but right now, we are laser focused right here because that's probably, uh, if there's a tornado still on the ground, where it would be at right now. And yeah, I think there's clearly a tornado on the ground, so we have to get down there uh, almost a street level right now. Uh, this is a dangerous situation. This is starting to move in uh, to some pretty heavily populated uh, counties that we have across our area. We saw the tornado damage, and again, at any moment, you guys could just pop that up, and we can talk through that, because it gives people a good reference that this isn't uh, like some joke or just, uh, hey, there's a tornado, uh, maybe going to happen, maybe not. Well, it happened in Pembroke. And that's what you're looking at there on the left side of your screen. That is tornado damage, some structural damage to uh, the roof there. Uh, and you can see a lot of that debris that's been uh, thrown across the pavement. Uh, there may be roads that are blocked. Please, please give uh, first responders, law enforcement, the opportunity to get out there, do their jobs. Watch our coverage. We have the live cameras out there right now. And again, uh, we just got an update. So you heard the uh, EAS alert system there. Um, for the tornado warning that we have ongoing for parts of Effingham, Chatham, Jasper counties. This is where the circulation is at right now. So let me see if we can um, get a little bit closer in. And I'm gonna back out of the view once again, just so I can see. This is around Sand Hill Road, uh, Blue Jay Road, Midland Road, crossing Highway 17, uh, probably just north of Eden. Uh, if you are in Rinkin right now, if you are in uh, Pinora, if you're in Springfield, please, please take your tornado precautions. This is a dangerous situation. We think a tornado may still be on the ground. It is confirmed on the ground. Okay, still confirmed on the ground. Again, uh, we have that access with the National Weather Service to uh, relay uh, any type of uh, storm uh, damage or updates to us, and they just said, Confirmation uh, still on the ground. So let's go back out here a little bit. It's moving east at 45 miles an hour. Okay, east at 45 miles per hour. So let's do a little more uh, letting people know exactly kind of where and what's up next. So here is mainly rain. This part of the storm could have some hail. Moving to the east at, what was it again? 45, 45 miles, an miles per hour. Again, they try to update this every five or 10 minutes uh, with new movement. Uh, new speeds, but 45 miles per hour. So there it is, very likely crossing into Effingham County now. If you live in that area, please, please, if you're on Pinora, take your tornado precautions right now. If you look on the left-hand side of your screen and you just turned us on, what you're looking at is live tornado damage in the Pembroke area. Uh, WJCL 22 is the only station showing you these live scenes of where a tornado just hit minutes ago. We'll get that back up there in just a second, but we've been showing you this from about two to three minutes after the tornado moved through Pembroke. We were live on the scene. So if you have any friends or family that are out ahead of this, maybe you live inland. 
around Statesboro. Maybe you live uh, down in Baxley. Uh, please, if they don't usually watch the weather, uh, make sure they at least know that there is a tornado warning for parts of Chatham, FNM, and Jasper counties. And this will very likely be extended all the way from Jasper into uh, Beaufort County, potentially even Hampton County as these storms continue. Uh, once again, these, uh, whenever these uh, pop up here, sort of our tornado algorithms that give us a heads up, but just looking at this radar, pretty easy as a trained meteorologist to be able to tell, uh, somewhere in this vicinity right here is where the tornado is still likely on the ground. So if you're in Pooler, uh, looks like now either downtown Savannah or just north of there, um, uh, those locations uh, could be right on the edge of this tornado warning. And I'm on air right now, but anyone that can hear me in the back, if we have an engineer, let's turn our Granger Nissan camera that we have in Garden City to more of a westerly direction, our downtown Savannah camera. Uh, that is pretty much pointing to the west. So we're gonna start to get a view of this supercell thunderstorm uh, potentially producing a tornado off to the west. So at any time, uh, people in the control room, just let me know if you do have uh, any of those up. Let's show you where the rotation is at right now. Uh, still pretty pronounced, just to the southwest of Rinkin. Can't stress this enough. If you're in Rinkin, please just uh, turn your TV on as loud as it will go. Go into your uh, safe shelter area. Your, take your tornado precautions because uh, this is where the rotation is at. Very likely the tornado and it's moving. Uh, to me, it's moving a little more to the northeast than east. So I would say east-northeast movement right now through the southern area of Effingham County. And then this will eventually be headed into Jasper County. If you're in Savannah, there's going to be additional thunderstorms tonight. And we have a tornado watch that goes until 9 p.m. this evening. So anywhere within the red lines right now, that's where the tornado warning is in effect. Let's go down here. There we go, and we can, um, you're looking at more of the uh, tornado damage that's out there. And again, it's a little bit of a chaotic scene. Our photojournalist out there uh, was the first on the scene after the tornado struck the Pembroke area. And that same cell has prompted this tornado warning, and it is right over Effingham County. We think the tornado could still be on the ground. We've had a number of reports of the tornado being confirmed as it moved from Bryan County uh, right here into Effingham County. Uh, if it would hold together a little bit down the road, we'd have to think about uh, anyone on I-95 uh, and then our friends into Jasper County. But right now, this is squarely over Effingham County, a dangerous, potentially deadly situation with a tornado on the ground right now. So our photojournalist is in the Pembroke area again. Uh, he's just going to continue roaming around and continue to give us the very latest uh, with this tornado damage. So a confirmed tornado hit at least part of the Pembroke area. At the moment, we don't know about any um, injuries that may have occurred due to this, but certainly there is some damage to trees. Also on our live cam that we had there, a little bit of uh, structural damage in the Pembroke area. So the tornado warning, that goes until 6.15. Uh, confirmed tornado moving through Effingham County right now. And the movement is uh, east. I think it's a little more northeast of east. And it's uh, moving at about 45 miles per hour. So you're going to just take a look here. Uh, the traffic, at least at 16, and uh, looks like uh, at exit 155 is still okay. But anywhere in Effingham County right now, that is uh, the area probably that we have of greatest concern right now. Uh, let's take a look at the velocity. Uh, there it is. It's uh, approaching the Rinkin area. So if you're in Rinkin, do not go outside. Please do not go out and look for the tornado because um, it may be rain wrapped, may not even be visible. Uh, let's move this over a little bit. Melissa, I'm going to toss it to you in uh, just a second here to get an update. But there's Rinkin. And again, we'll go back to the radar. And uh, let's put our pointer on here so we can give you uh, where we think they're. Uh, what you're looking at right now on I-16, uh, a lot of emergency vehicles have been called in. Uh, 
I mean, that one right there, uh, probably like a police rescue fire. Uh, we'll probably have some uh, electrical crews starting to head out there. That's why we're saying please don't go out and try to look at any of the damage. And another reason you don't want to go out there, there's a whole line of severe thunderstorms that's still about to move in our area. So if there's a tornado on the ground uh, just to the southwest of Rinkin, uh, right about in there in FNM County. And let's widen out our view here because, as I just alluded to, uh, there's a whole line of severe thunderstorms uh, starting to push through our area. Um, what was uh, this? Is there a new tornado warning up here to the north, or is that just outside of our area? They're continuing the tornado warning just outside of our area for okay. Dorchester County. Okay. Uh, I would say is we go through the next one to two hours, maybe two and a half hours, if you can just hold tight at home, not travel around the area if you have uh, maybe some kids out at sporting events or you had Little League this evening. This, tonight's not the night to be playing it. Tonight's the night to just sort of hang tight, get the severe weather updates. If a tornado warning uh, would be issued for where you live, uh, that is the time you need to be taking your tornado precautions. So we have a tornado watch until 9. This isn't going to hang around all evening or all night long. It might seem like it when you're in the midst of it, but uh, right now, uh, what we're watching very closely, and again, we're going to, uh, we'll move back over to our tornado warning that we have uh, ongoing into Effingham County. And with the movement, we'll do a storm track on this to show you. Uh, this is moving to the, it's kind of the east northeast, about 45 miles per hour. That will put this near Rinkin at 558, around Hardyville at 610. Bluffton at 625 and Shell Point about 637. If you're in Port Royal, still pretty far away from you. We'll have to see how uh, this uh, storm cycles or the structure of it down the road. Uh, but just to give you sort of the general idea, about 640 you could have some stronger storms in your backyard. Our concern right now though is definitely down into Effingham County. Once this moves by your area and you happen to have any severe weather reports, certainly um, pass those along to us. Our rotation markers continue um, to pop up here. Okay, all right, uh, Nakaya Carrero, WJCL 22 reporter, is in the Allendale area. WJCL 22 News was the only station uh, that stayed on the air to cover and keep the northern part of the low country safe when this uh, tornado made its way through the Allendale area. We gave Allendale at least 15 to 20 minutes lead time. So Nakaya, what are you seeing there right now? Hey, Jeremy, we are here in Allendale, South Carolina, and as, as you can see behind me across the road, there is down poles, buildings knocked down, trees snapped, but it's not just this side of the road. As we take you to the other side of the road, someone's home, tree ripped out of the ground, a light pole. These poles are supposed to be really strong. Well, it's snapped. It's ripped out of the ground. They're working to get the damage picked up, as you can see, People are driving at a very low speed, but we actually ran into some law enforcement on the way here and they told us to let people know to stay home and stay off the roads because they don't think this is over. They think this is just one a uh, moment in a possibly long night ahead. So we will be in the area of Allendale just covering and going from home to home and seeing what people are going through with this storm damage. Jeremy, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Nakaya. And I just went over to um, Melissa, who we're doing some team weather coverage here. This is a dangerous, destructive storm moving through Effingham County right now. So, Melissa, tell us what uh, you just mentioned. And again, we were talking about some hail across the area. And if this verifies, this is some of the biggest hail you'll ever see in our area. Yeah, absolutely, Jeremy. I mean, our primary concern has been with the tornado reports, but another big factor here is that hail that's out there. There are reports over in Bryan County near Ellabel of baseball size hail, 2.75 inches, obviously damaging some vehicles and other structures there. Now, this comes in from the public, but like Jeremy said, if this is something that can get confirmed, that is baseball size hail associated with this definitely doing some damage. Yes, and that just goes to speak to how strong and uh, 
I mean, potentially dangerous these supercell thunderstorms are. When you can get baseball-sized hail, which uh, really anything, maybe over a quarter to golf ball size hail in this part of the country is pretty rare. And when you start talking about um, baseball size hail, extreme updraft in the thunderstorm. And um, yeah, so right now uh, we got to get back to the uh, tornado warning because it appears that the circulation has moved. Okay, so uh, they're going to pop another live camera up here. Uh, this is State Route um, 21 at Old Augusta Road in Chatham County. So what you're looking at there right now may be some sort of inflow into the storm. Uh, hard to tell without sort of the uh, panoramic uh, horizon view there. But again, uh, definitely some ominous threatening skies out there. And uh, that is Old Augusta Road again. And that's in Chatham County. So uh, a couple things we're going to do here. Uh, there's so much going on. So let's just pause the radar. Let's show you where the circulation is at. There's a, potentially the tornado. If it is still on the ground, it would be almost right over Rinkin at the moment. So anywhere uh, in and around the vicinity of Rinkin, you have to, have to, have to be taking your tornado precautions uh, right now. And uh, just let me know, what are we looking at right now? Looks like we have more um, tornado damage there on the left-hand side of the screen. Was that uh, still in the Allendale area, do you know, Ashlyn? Okay, so uh, what we've shown you so far, and we're the only ones that have uh, the live tornado damage photos on right now, uh, Allendale, South Carolina, tornado ripped through there during uh, the late afternoon. That was closer to about 4 p.m. And then Pembroke, we showed you all the damage from the tornado that went through there. And uh, that tornado right now is very likely over Rinkin or near it, so we have to get down uh, keep all our friends in Effingham County safe. Uh, right now, it could be large destructive hail just north of Rinkin, and then the tornado potentially uh, almost right over the city. Let's do a little more storm analysis here. Let's show you some of the hail. Uh, at least this is showing the core of it. Uh, potentially could be over um, Rinkin right now, but there is uh, definitely a hail aspect to the storm now. And uh, we'll move this down a little bit. And I also want to uh, just check to see if there's any debris still being indicated across the area. Uh, I think that is debris being thrown up with this storm. So uh, about right in there, right here's Rinkin. And uh, here's where that circulation marker was earlier. I don't think that's where the tornado is still at, but it is tracking kind of to the east, northeast. Uh, that is very likely the radar indicating uh, debris being thrown up, which could be trees, uh, leaves, dirt. Uh, a part of structures. So the tornado could still be ongoing as it is approaching Rinkin right now. Anyone in the Rinkin area, please just uh, blast your TV, get into your safe spot, and uh, we'll let you know when the all clear is given for your area. But still, within these red lines, uh, tornado warning occurs, and it does include the Rinkin area. On the left-hand side of your screen, you're looking at tornado damage right now. And that's from a tornado that ripped through far northern areas of the low country. And that's uh, Allendale, South Carolina. Uh, also, if we can mix in, again, some of that video of Pembroke in northern Bryan County, uh, that would be great because we want to give everyone sort of the visuals to help wrap your mind around what these storms actually are doing. And they are doing a lot of damage across our area. So right here is Rinkin. North of it, tons of lightning, all these dots here are lightning strikes within about the last 10 to 15 minutes. And then this feature right in here where it kind of hooks down if there is still a tornado on the ground. And again, uh, still need some confirmation of that, but we think there could be. Uh, that's where it would very likely be located. Yeah, still good, uh, pretty strong rotation um, out in the uh, FNM County area, specifically in Rinkin right now. I know a lot of you out in uh, Effingham County have some friends out there. Uh, please make sure to uh, drop us a line here on social media uh, through email. Let us know after the storm passes sort of what you experienced and uh, what it is like in your own backyard. So again, in Rinkin, uh, this is uh, probably the most dangerous part of the storm right now, right over your area. And we can go in a little bit closer here. So uh, there's Rinkin, uh, Exley, 
and this will continue its trek off to the north and east. So, uh, yeah, there could still be a tornado um, on the ground. We'd like to get a little bit of confirmation with that, though, but either way, you're in the tornado warning and certainly need to be taking your tornado precautions and uh, take all these storms seriously. We're far from done. Uh, we'll back the view out here a little bit. Yeah, the hill over and um, near Ellabel earlier yes. in Bryan County. Well, it is just coming in. Law enforcement is reporting that there was a tornado in Bryan County near Lanier. Um, this was about 30 minutes ago, but numerous homes are damaged and there are multiple occupants trapped in a park place subdivision. Okay, can you repeat that one more time? That's so important. Yes, law enforcement is currently reporting that over in Bryan County, just near Lanier, that there are numerous homes damaged and multiple occupants are trapped in place in a subdivision near Ellabel. And that is also where we were reporting about the strong updrafts that possibly were creating baseball size hail as well. Okay, um, so out ahead of this main line of thunderstorms is where some of these uh, dangerous tornadic cells are occurring. And then once you get uh, closer kind of within the line, that is more stronger straight line winds with uh, maybe a little quicker spin up tornado. But definitely some of the uh, tornadoes that we've been looking at here across our area during the afternoon hours and now into this evening have uh, the potential to be more than just a little spin up tornado. They could be going uh, tens of miles here across some of these counties tracking from uh, let's say close to uh, Evans, northern uh, Bryan County, and then all the way into uh, Effingham County. So you see that area right now. We're going to get an update from the National Weather Service. They'll have to decide here uh, very soon if they're going to issue another tornado warning um, or if it will be a severe thunderstorm warning. I think that the rotation isn't nearly uh, sort of as uh, tight or uh, next to each other to give us that uh, indication and we can show you that here visually, a little better explainer here. Uh, right here by Pembroke, that's where the rotation was strongest. And then it tracked right into Effingham County. Uh, looks like it's going to be skirting or maybe even staying just to the north of Chatham County. And uh, you can get an idea here, all these uh, uh, what we call shear markers or rotation trackers, those are where uh, the most likely track of either rotational loft or an actual tornado has been so far today. So this one, Effingham County, uh, if you're in Jasper County, I would just take your tornado precautions. This is going to be heading its way uh, right towards I-95 here in very short order. So we're going to see here soon, National Weather Service has to make a decision. Are they going to extend this warning or are they going to allow it to expire? It looks like we have some debris that was thrown there. Uh, that is in Allendale, South Carolina. And again, to uh, anyone back in the control room, if we can cycle through some of the Pembroke stuff as well in uh, northern Bryan County, that would be awesome. Uh, but as you can see, it's just a lot of uh, when we show you these live scenes and we've been in two areas so far where there's been confirmed tornadoes. It's a lot of debris that's just thrown across the road, thrown into the woods. I don't even know uh, quite what that is right there. Um, but uh, you notice like trees are snapped and then you may have uh, parts of a home, uh, pieces of wood, plywood, shingles that have been thrown. And uh, we're just kind of scanning around. Uh, whoa, look at that. That uh, looks like it. Uh, I can't really tell what that structure is. Might have had a uh, rooftop on it there, but uh, potentially some sheet metal or um, uh, not the sturdiest of structures, but you get the idea. The wind just took and uh, basically blew that apart. Uh, what we're looking at right now is still into Effingham County, probably the worst storm uh, that we have across our area. There's tons and tons of lightning with this and it's continuing its trek. Um, off to the uh, sort of the north and east here. A little bit of rotation once again into Hampton County starting to show up. And I think what we wanna do is just uh, sort of scan around here a little bit across our area because we do have other uh, sort of areas of rotation starting to show up. And our storms are going to be hanging around here probably at least the next two to three hours. So we wanna uh, make sure even if you live inland here and you may not be uh, within the warning that we give you uh, best coverage possible to keep everyone uh, safe and sound. 
So right now we have tornado warning, that's north of Hampton County. This one right here definitely has weakened just a little bit. And then these areas of uh, sort of yellow lines here, those that you're looking at are severe thunderstorm warnings. So we can uh, plot some of our warnings that we have ongoing uh, across our area. So we have a tornado warning that's north of Hampton County until 6.30. 6.15 is the cell that is over Effingham County right now, and that probably just made its way through Rinkin. So we hope all of our friends in Rinkin are uh, safe, but you probably had some pretty strong winds there. Uh, that one, we're not quite as sure if the uh, circulation is still uh, holding together for a uh, tornado to form, but obviously these storms cycle, so uh, even if there's not a tornado at the second, uh, it definitely could be cycling back. But we saw the debris signatures that went from uh, northern areas of Bryan County all the way into Effingham County, and now with our storm reports that have started to come in, uh, let's go to some of those because we are getting um, some damage reports, and we can uh, move this back over here. Melissa, you mentioned it was uh, northern areas of uh, Bryan County, right, that had some of the structural damage? Yeah, that was near Ellabel um, and Eden, specifically. Okay, so these locations, uh, generally the swath right here where those tornado markers are down is where we did see some of that uh, damage a little bit earlier on. So let's go back to the radar, and we can um, kind of hop back over here. If there's still a tornado right now, it's very likely in this, this general um, vicinity. We can draw that on here. Probably somewhere uh, right in there. So I would say it's now east of Rinkin. Uh, but the tornado warning continues. And has there been any chat about um, extending the tornado warning at all? There is not. We are getting more videos sent in of the hail from around the area as well, though. Okay, and you, uh, can you mention once again how large that hail was? Yes, most of the reports we're getting are just golf ball size hail, but where we do know there was a confirmed tornado over near Eden in Bryan County, there are, we are getting some reports from the public that there is baseball size hail as well, so about 2.75 inches, just to speak to how strong the updrafts and the winds are with this storm. Okay. All right, I'm, try I'm just off uh, camera here one second. I'm trying to uh, scan through all my social media mm -hmm. to uh, kind of go through things. We've seen a lot of uh, damage come in from the Allendale area. Um, if yes. you're in that uh, northern part of uh, Bryan County, uh, that area of Pembroke has had um, uh, sort of extensive damage. We've um, been showing people that. Uh, we were the first to have any type of live pictures. Again, in our control room, if you guys uh, rolled on any of that, please, let's go back and show some of the uh, Pembroke, Pembroke damage once again. Um, but what we're looking at right now, and Melissa's going to keep me updated here, because uh, there, we have to see here very soon if this tornado warning will be extended, because it's going to move uh, towards I-95, towards Ridgeland, and that circulation is still there. It may not be quite um, as pronounced or quite as tight as earlier today, but definitely uh, still looking at, I would say it's uh, maybe near just to the north of the Hardyville area is uh, where some of the rotation is at right now. So that's the tornado warning. Hardyville, you are included in it. And let's just go uh, show you uh, some of the uh, sort of the x-ray of the storm right now. But I would say right in there, if there is a tornado that would still be on the ground, uh, that's where it would be right now, would be this part of uh, southeastern Effingham County, and now about to cross over the river into Jasper County. Our uh, rotation markers are still on this, and we'll hop back here to the radar. And there it is. Um, I'm really pretty surprised they haven't uh, at least uh, put a severe thunderstorm warning on this, because as we've mentioned, there's been a lot of hail Earlier, this had baseball size hail with it, and some of our uh, hail indicators here, we can go back and uh, sort of scan through the storm. Uh, a little bit of hail in that direction doesn't look to be um, quite what it was a little bit earlier. So uh, just let me know what we're looking at, and I'll, and I'll mention it to everyone. Okay, so we have our tornado damage right now. Emergency crews are uh, still trying to help everyone out in the Allendale area. 
as well as uh, into northern Bryan County. We've seen a lot of damage there around the Pembroke area. And we're still trying to uh, work our way to some of the damage reports that may be coming in from southern areas of Bullock County. So it looks like that guy may have seen the tornado and is describing it. It's like uh, just whoosh in and out of here that quickly. So as we go into Jasper County, right about there, uh, we'll zoom in here and give you a little more definition of this storm. Uh, the rotation uh, about to approach I-95. And then to the north of it, I would say Ridgeland could get in uh, basically just uh, extremely heavy rain. Uh, may even have a little bit of that hail mix in. But so far, this storm compared to maybe 30 to 40 minutes ago is weaker in the sense that the rotation may not be as organized. Uh, we'll look at our shear tracks though. We can do a number of, oh, a number of things here. And I'll just move this uh, back. And we'll take a look and uh, we'll be able to tell uh, pretty quickly here. Uh, that's definitely still a pretty good uh, rotation. Now the question is, is that translating all the way down to the ground or is this just a, a, a storm that's uh, like a mesocyclone, so to speak? It's just a lot of uh, rotation within that. Okay, um, there we go. Some full images in the uh, Pembroke area. We showed you these uh, less than five minutes after um, the tornado moved through, so it uh, looks like up in the top area here, some structural damage. Uh, a lot of the limbs and branches were shredded off from the trees here. Uh, you can see that. A lot of debris has been thrown across the pavement and the lawn. Uh, as you look at it, it looks like this tr uh, tree here fell directly on that home. Uh, and we know by looking at the radar that this was a confirmed tornado law enforcement uh, also, again, in the uh, Pembroke area, uh, we're out there and they saw the tornado and now it, is, uh, it has pushed its way from Effingham County and it is uh, now into Jasper County. So the rotation is very close to Hardyville. Let's go back to the uh, radar here and then we'll zoom out a little bit to give everyone a little better perspective of, oops, of uh, what we are looking at across our area. Let's just go to the home uh, to the home view. Uh, there's the tornado warning that we have out there right now. There it is, areas within the red lines. That cell, though, is about to exit the tornado warning. We also have um, severe thunderstorm warnings down here for portions of Bryan, Liberty, Southern Chatham County, McIntosh County, parts of Long, and once again, Liberty County. That line of storms is now progressing its way across the area. So let's, uh, oh, I think a new tornado warning just came out and we'll address that here in just a second. But to give everyone a uh, wide view of what we're looking at right here, we have these individual cells out ahead of this that are potentially tornadic. And then this squall line here to the west is uh, what would probably have winds of maybe 60 miles per hour or higher. Lots of severe thunderstorm warnings have been lined up with that. Uh, live look outside right now. This is I-95 North at exit five. So right now, looks like traffic is moving along fine. The roads are wet, so uh, we can uh, find a different camera or take the radar back full. Do you know uh, why that alert thing went off there, Melissa? They have not put any notification out yet. Okay, all right. Typically, sometimes we get the alert. All right, I think it's this right here. Um, this huge severe thunderstorm warning, which is new. So basically, if you are watching us right now, almost the entire area, and we're gonna pause the radar because this is a, a little bit cluttery right now. Uh, this is about the most warnings I think I've ever seen it the same time here across Southeast Georgia and the low country. Areas within the yellow lines right now have um, uh, there's the new tornado warning, so we're going to go down to that. But areas within the yellow line, severe thunderstorm warning for damaging straight line winds. And the new tornado warning, uh, Melissa, you get ready and I'll toss it to you here in just a, a second. But we're going to head uh, right down to the low country because it looks like this storm uh, may be sort of starting to cycle back once again. They can do that. They produce... Um, Okay, all right, uh, what we're going to do is take a look. This is tornado video from a viewer in Pembroke. So 
again, uh, this I'm not sure if, uh, what highway this is, but remember it did cross over 280. Uh, confirmed tornado in the Pembroke area earlier on today. And please, if you have friends or family at home and uh, they don't watch a lot of TV, make sure to have them turn on WJCL 22. We are the only station that stayed on for the Allendale tornado, gave you 20 minutes lead time there, gave you lead time in Pembroke before the tornado hit. We're showing you the visuals across our area. We want you to know what's going on in your community and across Southeast Georgia and the low country. And right now, uh, this this uh, tornado warning, hang on one second, Ashlyn. I want to make sure uh, when we do it, if we could go split screen to keep the radar up, that would be uh, fantastic. So a tornado warning that's exiting um, Ephraim County and Jasper County, and then a tornado warning brand new for Beaufort County and also Jasper County. That goes until 7 p.m. If you're within these red lines, you need to take your tornado precautions. This isn't a time to think about, mm, maybe I'll do it later. It's now. Please do it now. So tornado warning until 7 p.m. So our Nakia Carrero, uh, if you're still out there, all right, in Allendale, uh, give us an update. Uh, while you're talking, we're going to keep the radar here because we also have some tornado warnings for the low country. Jeremy, we're still out here in Allendale County, and as you can see behind me, this building is completely destroyed. We're seeing down power lines, snapped power lines, and also down fuel tanks, which farmers use to fuel their vehicles on their property. And we actually have here with us Stephen Robinson with the Allendale County Sheriff's Department. Uh, Stephen, you were actually in the area helping someone you know. Can you talk a little bit about that damage? Yes, uh, it's one of our deputies. Uh, if you look over on this side over here, her house, the roof is completely gone. Um, when this tornado touched down, uh, myself personally, I was actually here at the gas station getting gas and actually saw it. And it was it was something you just can't describe. It's, it's amazing. But with the, the resources that we have, we've used, uh, we have... Uh, Hampton County Sheriff Department and the um, fire at EMS. Uh, we have wildlife out, uh, the solicitor's office out, uh, highway patrol, DNR. I mean, we all come together because we've got a task that we got at hand that we, we're going to have to get accomplished. Stephen, we're seeing a lot of people on the road. We're seeing a lot of cars driving. Um, what is the message you guys have for them? We ask if you don't have to be out here, don't come out because you're causing a traffic hazard because we're trying to keep traffic flowing smoothly. A lot of the local residents, they're just circling around looking. Um, that's creating a problem with us. Uh, thus far, we've been able to keep traffic moving smoothly, uh, even with the major highway being closed down. Um, with traffic, you know, obviously the weather is still going. It's still raining hard. What are some fears with, um, you know, all these vehicles out for you guys? Well, the fear is that, you know, down power lines is the main thing, and we don't know if they're alive or if they're dead. Uh, we treat all power lines down as if they are live lines. So that's the other thing, you know, daylight is setting, it's going down now, so visibility is getting low. We just don't want anybody out and getting hurt, you know, that maybe a line down that you don't see at night and walk into it. We don't want anybody hurt. So far, we don't have we don't have any reported injuries, and that's the way we would like for that to stay. Thank you so much, Stephen. I appreciate it. Jeremy, you heard that they want people to stay home. As you can see behind me and on me, the rain is still coming. It's still going to possibly keep coming. You tell me, what do you think? Okay, well, where you are at right now, I think the worst of it is probably uh, about to move through your area, but we're really laser focused just south of there in the low country, so let's talk about this now. Uh, tornado warning continues for Beaufort County and also Jasper County. Now we can do a little bit more storm analysis here and show you uh, sort of what we are looking at in terms of the velocity or 
maybe the rotation within that. While we focus in on the low country, uh, off on the left-hand side there, that is the confirmed tornado damage that we have in northern Bryan County in the Pembroke area. So again, we're the only station showing you these live visuals of damage really strewn all across southeast Georgia and the low country from these damaging storms that have moved through. So Allendale in South Carolina, uh, northern Bryan County, you're looking at some uh, structural damage there. Look at the rooftop. Looks like that's been peeled back a little bit. Uh, lots of trees have been thrown onto the pavement there. And now our concern is that this same cell that produced that moved its way across Effingham County. If uh, anyone out in Effingham County could send me some uh, reports now that the storm has passed you via social media, Twitter or Facebook, that would be awesome. And our radar winds here still showing in this general vicinity, uh, maybe right in here, somewhere right in there. Uh, it looks like it just crossed over I-95, but I would say right in that uh, area where we're pointing to, uh, the arrow, the head of it right there would be where the rotation would be and the potential for a uh, tornado continues to exist. So our radar right now, uh, there it is. That's the uh, area of circulation. If you're north of it, torrential buckets of rain. Uh, could be some windy conditions within that and also uh, watch for some hail. It looks like that hail potential did come down just a little bit. Let's um, take just a second here to back the view out because we have a lot of active uh, right now. Um, severe weather warnings, uh, if you're within these yellow lines, that is a severe thunderstorm warning. Wind gusts potentially up to uh, about 60 miles per hour. And something I'm starting to notice here, it's these uh, storms on the leading edge of where the air is still a lot warmer that could be turning severe. Uh, this one here on Coastal Bryan and Chatham counties, um, I'm going to loop that because that one uh, definitely has just started to pique my interest. That may be one of the next storms that uh, could potentially turn severe, but it looks like the good news is that one's tracking northeast. So if you're in Tybee Island, just uh, uh, keep an eye on that. It's below severe levels right now. Uh, and on the left-hand side there, um, that is in Savannah. And, okay, Chatham Parkway. Uh, if we can take our Granger Nissan camera, that would be uh, awesome. And let's back our view out here. And we can show you sort of the progression all the way across southeast Georgia and the low country of some of these showers and thunderstorms that are just all over the area right now. Uh, a lot of stronger straight line winds will come blowing in with this line. And then the tornado warning is still ongoing into the low country. So um, there's our Chatham Parkway camera at Granger Nissan. Uh, that is not even the strongest wind that we'll see across our area. So just kind of breezy out there right now. Uh, this line is about to push in. Uh, let's keep an eye on the downtown Savannah camera as well. Maybe in about 15 to 30 minutes, uh, that one will have something interesting uh, to look at in the form of maybe a shelf cloud could be on uh, the leading edge. Let's go back into the low country. All right, there's downtown Savannah. Obviously some rain there right now. And the uh, radar view here across the low country. Let's stay focused on the tornado warning and some of the details with that. This is a uh, radar indicated at the moment, but these have really sort of, uh, they quickly strengthen or pulse up. And that's when we've had them uh, drop tornadoes today. Uh, let's see here, let's put some of the warnings on here and we can give you a little update here of sort of the time frame we're looking at. Tornado warning, this will go until 7 p.m. So we've been on here a while, so let me hop off here. It is uh, 622 right now. So that tornado warning is for Jasper and Beaufort County, and that's continuing its trek off to the north and east, and that will continue until 7 p.m. this evening. If there is a tornado, be in this little pocket, uh, generally right in uh, that area there. So we can uh, put our um, storm tracks on here once again. Some of our uh, sort of rotation indicators, you can follow this line. It went right from near Rinkin, uh, close to Hardyville. Now it's crossed over I-95. And the good news here, it looks like it has weakened, but it's still uh, radar indicated rotation at this point. But really at any point, uh, it's still a chance there could be a spin-up tornado 
across our area. Some of these definitely were not just little spin-up tornadoes based on um, some of the damage that we have been looking at. Uh, a live view right now, this is from Harbor Town, Hilton Head Lighthouse from the top of it. Uh, just some rain there and very likely uh, a little bit of wind associated with that. Uh, let's put our radar into motion here and get a good idea of where the storm is tracking its way uh, across the low country. It definitely has weakened a little bit in the sense that the rotation is not as strong. And our camera again on Hilton Head Island there uh, just down uh, to the south outside of our radar view. Another look here towards um, Chatham Center in Savannah. So the rain and the storms will come sweeping their way across Chatham and Bryan counties here, mainly with that sort of squall line that we have off to the west. And we can take a look at that once again. So there it is. Uh, once again, within this line, that is mainly stronger straight line winds, but you can get these little circulations and even a little potential spin up tornado from time to time. It's out ahead of it. We need these storms that are out ahead of it, just sort of feeding off the warm, moist, uh, sort of untapped potential in the atmosphere. And uh, we need those storms to get out of here. Those are the ones that have been producing the tornadoes across our area today. And the tornado warning continues until 7 p.m. for Jasper and Beaufort counties. Our Plant Riverside District camera right now, this is an easterly view. So if you were standing on the top of uh, Plant Riverside there and looking to the east, looking towards the ocean, this is your view right now. And it's getting a good look at some of these storms I mentioned earlier that are basically hugging the coastline. They're on the verge of being severe. I would not even be surprised if uh, just offshore there would be some water spouts as uh, these have strengthened quite a bit. Downtown Savannah right now, uh, the rain starting to pour in and very shortly here approaching us will be this line of strong to severe thunderstorms and that's going to continue its progression to the east and along with that winds maybe uh, upwards of about 60 miles per hour. So let's go back and take a look once again at our tornado warn storm. We're watching that pretty closely because really um, at any time uh, that could pulse up a little bit or strengthen that warning for Jasper and Beaufort County goes until 7 p.m. and it looks like they trimmed that so Hardyville you're in the clear from this particular threat at the moment. And Melissa, have you seen anything new or to update? Yeah, on the storm in Beaufort and Jasper counties, that tornado warning now until 7 p.m. Now it is radar indicated rotation and that severe thunderstorm that is capable of producing that tornado, it's located near Old House. So if you're in that area in between Jasper and Beaufort counties, they're, you're the ones that need to be taking your precautions right now. Now this is going to be moving northeast at 30 miles an hour as it continues off. So that's going to put Beaufort, Port Royal, Ridgeland, Clarendon, Jasper, Gramville, Gardens Corner, um, Lemon Island, Sun City. You all are going to be in the path. Another area, Switzerland, Shell Point's also going to be there. So is Burton, Kalawasi Island. You're also included in this. And like I mentioned, Old Bay or Old House toward Laurel Bay as well. Now, this is moving northeast at 30 miles an hour. That rotation is radar indicated right now. We don't have any confirmation of a tornado on the ground, but we are seeing it on the radar with that rotation. So make sure you're taking your precautions. This thunderstorm. That storm does have some strong winds associated with it as well. And it's moving or it's going to be right along I-95 in South Carolina between mile markers 15 and 32 to put it in perspective for you. Okay. Uh, so great information there. Thank you so much for sharing. I had just a uh, one second to pop over here and uh, do a little bit of analysis on the side, look at social media. Uh, yeah, Rinkin, you definitely had um, some pretty large um, hail in your area earlier. And again, that cell is the one that is the same one that produced the tornado damage in the Pembroke area. And we just had a new tornado warning come in and it's for Hampton County. So I'm gonna back the view out here. Uh, those storms have uh, really plagued the low country today. Uh, there it is, brand new tornado warning. So uh, let's, go, uh, let's go in a little bit closer here. 
Uh, so we can get both of these uh, warnings in at the same time. So we'll move this ever so slightly. Uh, if you're northeast of Hampton right now, take your tornado precautions. And also uh, in and around Buford at the moment, uh, just to your west is where that potential tornado is. There's at the very least some rotation being indicated with that. And let's go and do some, uh, what I would like to say are like the x-ray of the storm. Uh, there it is, definitely uh, these areas right here, and I can kind of highlight those um, for you. Uh, let's draw in there. Uh, right in there is one rotation, and uh, right about in there. So we're going to go back to the regular radar, and then I think what we'll do is just we'll put a storm track on this in just a second. I want to see how fast this is moving. So the tornado warning, let's see here, for Hampton County is moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. And so far, it has been radar indicated. And what you're looking at there, we're just uh, scanning through some of the uh, South Carolina Department of Transportation cameras. And it looks like this was in the uh, Ridgeland area. So there it is, that uh, potentially tornadic storm moving to Jasper, uh, about to move into Beaufort County. This is north of Hilton Head Island. You are not included in the tornado warning. It goes from Beaufort. Uh, up very close to Yemisee and back around the Ridgeland area. So traffic is still moving on I-95, but again, uh, a lot of people, I don't expect you to be a meteorologist, but one thing I do expect whenever there's a threat of severe weather or any day, you should have the ability to receive a watch or a warning that is sent directly to you. And probably the easiest way is through the WJCL 22 News app. It doesn't matter where you're at, if there's a warning, it will be sent uh, directly to your area. Let's go a little bit closer to Hampton now. Uh, this is just a handful of miles off to the north and east, and we'll do a little bit of storm analysis. And uh, check this out. Oh, yeah, there's definitely rotation right now. And this is basically uh, just a few miles outside of Hampton. Uh, maybe about four miles to the east of Hampton is where this rotation is being indicated right now. We mentioned it's moving east at about 45 miles per hour. And we'll back our view out here, and we can put a storm track on this as well. Uh, let's go in here now. We'll move this down, uh, put a storm track on it. Uh, we'll put this one on it. it. covers a little more area. Okay, so northeast around 45, and these are the communities. Uh, looks like the Moselle area at about 632. And then we get to Williams at 646, Stokes at 655, Grover at 707, and the uh, Harleyville area at 721. So rotation being indicated, a tornado may form at any time. If you are in the path of this potentially destructive storm, you need to take your tornado precautions. Now let's head back down and see if that storm that has also prompted a tornado warning. Uh, we'll put a storm track on that. It should have a pretty similar movement. About 45 miles per hour. And we're looking at these areas, Beaufort, about 635. So even if you miss out on that sort of rotation within it or a potential tornado, the severe thunderstorm will be over your area. Around the uh, Fenwick area, at 658 Hollywood, 716 Johns Islands. So we're getting closer uh, to basically the Charleston area at that point. We just heard a bunch of rumbles of thunder here in and around Savannah. So we'll go uh, inspect our radar here quick. Tornado warnings are all in the low country right now. This line of thunderstorms, and we'll put a, a track on that as well because those have been um, severe across our area. Look at this arcing line, which could all be winds of maybe 55, 60 miles per hour or higher across the area. And that will come sweeping its way, already pushing into Hampton County. Uh, that will be into Jasper County, pushing through northern areas of Effingham County, and that would be around the Springfield area. Uh, just uh, sort of blasted through Statesboro. That will head into Pembroke, which they're doing tornado cleanup right now. And then our southern areas around Long County, our friends in Ludowisi, you're going to see that line push to the area. We do think as it approaches the coastline, it may weaken a little bit. So we'll see um, how many more warnings are issued. Now the squall line 
uh, will kind of estimate, uh, based on how the other movement has been, around about 45 to 50 miles per hour. Here is the potential arrival time. This would be more just plain old wind, heavy rain, and not good driving conditions if you have errands to run or anything to do this evening. Wait till this passes by. Hampton at 641. Hinesville at 651. Pooler at 7. Savannah 717. And Buford at 725. So what we're looking at right now is uh, this is it. Okay, this is at Chatham Parkway and I-16, so an area a lot of us travel often. Um, this, is, this may just be like a little fender bender accident. I don't necessarily think this could be any uh, type of uh, storm damage per se, because our station is located so close to this and we would have probably heard, um, I mean, we're up maybe a quarter mile from that location, so we would have probably heard if any uh, wind started to pick up and it didn't look like anything on radar, but hopefully everyone involved there is okay. We have a couple of active tornado warnings uh, across our area right now. And we're going to move this down uh, just a little bit. And we can also zoom in to these counties, which does include a little bit of Hampton County. And then a portion of Jasper into Beaufort County. So far, it has been radar indicated. And it looks like some good news here. Uh, Melissa, I believe Hampton has been trimmed away from that warning. Do you have any more information on that? Yes, they have canceled the warning for Hampton County. However, they have continued that warning up into Colleton as that storm gets closer to Islington. So if you are in Hampton, you are in the clear as that storm continues to move off to the northeast at 45 miles an hour. But if you have family or friends that are in Colleton or Dorchester, they're the ones who are now in the path of it. So let them know. Okay, and it looks like here... Um, I know you, okay, this is just came out here. I think it's an update to earlier. It says law enforcement reported an individual trapped inside a damaged structure on Ledford Street. No injury reported. That was in Pembroke. Remember, uh, less than five minutes after that tornado occurred, we were giving you live pictures from Pembroke of the damage. And uh, certainly we hope everyone is uh, safe across the area. Uh, but this is Pembroke earlier, I believe. Uh, can you guys confirm in my ear that this is the Pembroke damage we're looking at right now? Uh, there it is. So this is uh, Pembroke earlier on. Uh, a lot of trees down. Um, a lot of trees just uh, really stripped of branches. Uh, twigs ripped off from them. Shingles. Part of the top of this building uh, was just sort of peeled open like a can. Uh, peeled back. You can see uh, that tree there just uh, stripped away. And as the video goes to the, uh, the left, there's a, a large tree that was toppled onto a house. Uh, so far today... Uh, the most damage that we have seen across our local area has been in Pembroke and also into uh, Allendale. So those two locations, Allendale was around 4 p.m. And then it was more like early evening that we had those storms that were uh, moving through northern Bryan County into Effingham County. And they also produced uh, that damage. So what you're looking at right here, this is Allendale. Again, WJCL 22 has been leading the way today. We were the only station on the entire time giving people in Allendale County a heads up that there was a destructive tornado headed right towards Allendale. We stayed on because our friends in uh, northern Hampton County, it was so important to give you this life-saving information in case that storm, it was just a handful of miles away from northern Hampton County. And then uh, we showed you the visuals down in Pembroke. So this is what it looks like in Allendale in South Carolina. Uh, certainly, uh, if you go through a storm like this, it's something that takes a little bit of time to recover from. And uh, the, the only downside that we have is a few more storms moving through this evening. And then a renewed chance of severe weather comes at us as we go through Wednesday. So uh, it's going to take a little time before we can uh, get outside, get everything cleaned up, help out friends, loved ones, and neighbors. But this evening, uh, we're still focused on the threat of some stronger, potentially dangerous storms across our area. So we're going to stop the radar 
and head back into the low country of South Carolina. So let's uh, get zeroed in here where our tornado warning continues until 7 p.m. this evening. Uh, right here is beautiful Beaufort. Ridgeland just, just passed by, so we did not get any confirmation yet of any tornado for you. Certainly that's good. And what it looks like right now is this uh, sort of supercell thunderstorm is not nearly as organized as it was maybe about 30, 45, 60 minutes down the road when it was in Effingham County and then into northern Bryan County when it did produce all that damage around the Pembroke area. So if you're within these red lines right now, you still need to be taking your tornado precautions. This is moving off to the east northeast. So in Beaufort, uh, almost ready to give you the all clear there as the storm is to your north, but not quite yet. Some of you may live on the north side of town and that's still uh, definitely being impacted. We'll take a look at a little x-ray, uh, some of the winds within it. Yeah, there's still some uh, rotation there. Not nearly as strong as when it was uh, spawning those tornadoes into portions of Bryan County a little bit earlier on. We'll keep close tabs on that. We're going to head back to the radar, sort of back the view out here because we do have um, more thunderstorms and some of those have been severe across our area. So let's back the, yeah, the view out here just a little bit. Reports coming in um, out of Pembroke, like you mentioned earlier. We have a couple there. Um, one law enforcement is reporting an individual trapped inside their uh, damaged structure on Ledford Street, like you mentioned, with no injuries, thank goodness. Another report, though, from law enforcement as well multiple homes are damaged and multiple individuals are trapped on Benton Street, and that is in Pembroke as well. Okay. All right, and that's a, uh, the video you're looking at right now is in Pembroke from earlier today, less than about five minutes after that tornado uh, did all the damage there. Uh, our WJCL 22 photojournalist was there giving you the uh, exclusive live look at sort of the very first moments after the tornado swept through the northern portions of Bryan County. And again, that was in the Pembroke area, so... Um, that's sort of uh, what we're looking at. A lot of hail videos are coming, or hail photos are coming in to me right now. Uh, one that I'm looking at in um, Rinkin is probably at least, I would say, golf ball size hail, maybe a little bit larger than that. So Bryan County right now, uh, that is, uh, that's the view of the tornado. We showed that a little bit earlier. Let's just keep, uh, we can keep on showing that to give people uh, sort of that uh, visual look of uh, what it looked like out there when that um, tornado was uh, moving through the area earlier on today. And that's the storm that then went into Effingham County and dumped uh, what it looks like could have been some very large hail. So that is the tornado right there off in the distance. And we're still at this hour monitoring some active tornado warnings. This one in Beaufort County goes until 7. Uh, the tornado warning was allowed to expire a little bit early. They trimmed that away in Hampton County. So at the moment from the tornado warning, you're in the all clear, uh, but definitely not from storms. They're still a pretty potent line uh, moving across our area. And it appears here. So let's uh, do a little movement and uh, put some of our warnings on so we can give you a little better idea um, of the active warnings that we have across the area. So we have the tornado warning in Beaufort County. That goes until 7 p.m. And then we also have the tornado warning that is uh, just outside of that for Allendale County. So that area, once again, is potentially seeing some uh, tornadic circulation. Down closer here to uh, what looks like Screven, Jasper, uh, parts, a uh, little part there of Beaufort County, Afrinim County, a little bit into Bryan County. That is a severe thunderstorm warning. And for the most part, that has just been some stronger straight line winds that have been um, sweeping through our area during the uh, afternoon to the evening hours. But if we can get this line out of here, that will sort of uh, clean out the atmosphere a little bit, so to speak, get uh, a little more stable air in place. But it's still a little bit away from the coastline. And uh, that line right now, until we get that off from our coastline, 
Uh, looks like it's still about 48 miles away and with the movement between about 45 to at times 50 miles per hour east northeast direction probably at least another 60 maybe 90 minutes before we get most of this um, offshore so the big thing now is uh, cleanup for some of these communities may have to wait a little bit though because we have to get um, all these storms to uh, push their way exit the coastline even if there's no warnings where you're at and you're like, I want to go outside, clean up some down branches. Um, might be power lines that are down, might not be able to see. We'll have night falling here soon and we just want you to be very safe. If we have any of our cameras ready to go, maybe downtown Savannah, the plant Riverside, uh, Granger Nissan, we'll kind of take a look outside here and see what we're looking at. So that just looks like kind of a uh, gray sky, maybe some rain there in downtown Savannah, Granger Nissan. Not a lot of wind out there. We think those winds will start to be ramping up though within uh, potentially about, I would say 30 minutes or so. Granger Nissan camera, uh, where I'm pointing maybe right about there and those stronger winds are around Pembroke right now. And those will continue pushing to the east. Looking from Plant Riverside east, so towards the ocean. Right now, some darker skies out there. And right here we have some thunderstorms. I mentioned this earlier. I thought that thunderstorm was going to strengthen and potentially produce some rotation, maybe a water spout. And boom, there it is. Uh, offshore right now of Chatham County, uh, probably a water spout on going there. Uh, let's loop that because I don't want that to be moving back towards land at all. Uh, that is moving its way away from the coastline. So a potential water spout there off from uh, Chatham County coastline. And this is a, a pretty good view, I would say, if you looked more towards the right-hand part of the screen and then even further down to the south or southeast, that's where um, that thunderstorm is located right now with that uh, sort of potential rotation and a little bit of lightning there offshore. So let's keep an eye on that camera. That's probably going to be um, pretty active here soon. Otherwise, just a lot of rain, thunderstorms, and severe thunderstorm warnings across our area. Still a tornado warning, there it is. There's probably multiple water spouts out there right now, um, but we're definitely looking at the strongest storms to be out ahead of this main line, really just feeding off from the moisture, the lift, the instability to help uh, really drive these to strengthen. And once this line goes by, we will not have that. So it'll be uh, great sleeping weather for us tonight. So some good news there. All right, maybe a little good news to pass along into Beaufort County. I saw the National Weather Service just issued a severe thunderstorm warning upstream or to the east and northeast of Beaufort County. So to me that says uh, the rotation may be cycled out just a little bit, but still some stronger winds are possible within that. And hopefully uh, this warning, let's take a look here what time it is. Let's see, we're at 646 currently. So this warning goes until seven, but it looks like any rotation right now is quickly uh, approaching the county line. Uh, definitely still a little bit ominous right in that area. So north of Beaufort and then starting to approach you from the west are those uh, sort of stronger straight line winds. Uh, live look right now is uh, Butler Avenue on Tybee Island. So just wet pavement out there, uh, nothing threatening right now. If you wanna take that uh, camera once again at the uh, pier area, that's totally fine. Uh, we can uh, take a look here and we still have uh, that rotation offshore, but that is moving away from coastal Chatham County. Uh, certainly some good news there because that is a pretty healthy looking storm. If you're uh, anywhere at the beach or near the coastline, probably seen a lot of lightning offshore. Um, that stronger storm is out there, but it's moving to the northeast and away from the coastline. Uh, the cell right here that prompted the tornado warning a little bit earlier. We think that that rotation, give it another five minutes, will be out of Beaufort County. So Beaufort County, you could be dropped from that warning a little bit early which is uh, certainly some good news. And then here comes that uh, just more generic squall line, a uh, good push of wind associated with that. Still will watch this though. We have a tornado watch until 9 p.m. this evening. So it is possible maybe there's a little rotation along this line, um, but so far not really seeing that. And let's back the view out here. We haven't uh, really taken a look at this in a while. 
check out all these severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings. But the focus now is really for the, as I've been mentioning, the best lift, moisture, instability, translating its way north through South Carolina and eventually maybe even into North Carolina with just more of this trailing line. Uh, certainly some stronger storms, maybe severe at times, but doesn't have that real supercell thunderstorm look to it that we had with uh, all the uh, tornado warnings that produced some damage across our area. Uh, any cameras or any tornado damage that you have to pop up, certainly I would love to discuss that because uh, we're still sort of working our way through um, some of the tornado warnings here. Uh, live look outside in downtown Savannah, and we'll probably have uh, that severe thunderstorm uh, approaching our area here very soon. Um, let's move this over just a little bit. Uh, there we go. If you're in Springfield right now, Effingham County, a uh, pretty good push of wind for your area with that severe thunderstorm warning. Um, you're looking outside right now from our Hotel Tybee camera, and those thunderstorms are just offshore right now, and they are tracking their way off to the north and east. What you're looking at right here is Storm Tracker Radar Network. Uh, if there is still a chance of a tornado at this second within our viewing area, uh, best bet would be uh, almost in this extreme eastern part of Beaufort County, about to move out of there. And let's do a little more uh, analysis with that. Uh, there it is, nothing um, too impressive, and I think that's why it's a severe thunderstorm warning, not a tornado warning. And once that crosses out of Beaufort County, we'll just be left then with severe thunderstorm warnings here across southeast Georgia and the low country of South Carolina. So at this moment, uh, this is moving away from land. If this was moving towards land, uh, there's likely at least two water spouts offshore right now from Tybee Island, but that is uh, pretty far offshore. I would say at least um, maybe seven, eight, 10 miles. So not concerning since it's moving away from the area. Uh, right here, this little line, and remember we're looking at radar winds at the moment, would be that next sort of push of stronger straight line winds, potentially maybe 50, 60 miles per hour. Um, not really hail producers, so it looks like this is transitioning over to mainly um, just some wind with that line moving through it. And we'll loop this here for you. The loop that you're looking at is a one hour loop, and it does show these individual cells. That's uh, We'll have to keep an eye on that. It's going to be out of Beaufort County here in a couple seconds, but uh, definitely uh, if that would pulse back up, have to watch that for our friends as it starts to get a little bit closer to the Charleston area. Uh, stronger storm offshore and then severe thunderstorm warnings right now that go from the low country all the way down into a little piece here of Liberty County. So the thunderstorm made its way through the Springfield area. If we have any cameras right now, uh, maybe in Rinkin, Springfield, um, around Ridgeland, we could pick up this uh, sort of nasty uh, little line of thunderstorms starting to move in. And I can urge it soon enough to just uh, sort of get off from the coastline and then we can give everyone the all clear and go about your evening. Hopefully you missed out on any damage across your area. So right here, let's go back and look one more time to Beaufort County. Um, we need to wait till this is out of Beaufort County though, and then we can give you the all clear. So in the uh, Chisholm area, still a tornado warning. That goes until 7 p.m. If we get a couple more radar scans in here, uh, certainly we're not gonna leave you with a uh, tornado warning still ongoing. Um, there it is, there's definitely some rotation uh, right in that area between the uh, Wilkins and Chisholm area. So that tornado warning goes until the top of the hour. So that's still into Beaufort County. And this is making its way off to the east, northeast. It's still, uh, most of these have been moving about 45 to 50 miles per hour. And we can put our shear tracks on this. And this does still indicate maybe some uh, weak rotation right in this vicinity. So once the tornado warning uh, hopefully expires at 7 p.m., then we'll be allowed to 
uh, then it will be more of just a st stronger straight line winds uh, that would start to push into our area. So this is the tornado warning continues until 7 p.m. this evening. So that's uh, the tornado warning and then a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings that extend right now from Long County and they go all the way along this line into northern Bryan County, Effingham County and then this area right in here where it goes through a little piece of Chatham County into Jasper County and then into areas up towards Hampton County. That's where the strongest winds are at right now. Lots of lightning associated with these. If we have any cameras uh, that might be able to take a look to the west, could probably pick up this line as it starts to uh, approach our area. And this will be blowing through. So give this maybe another one hour and we're hopeful that this line of severe weather will have pushed its way offshore. So the only tornado warning that we have ongoing, and we can go take a little closer look at that, is into Beaufort County. So right here is uh, that tornado warn storm. Uh, we give this one more radar scan. It will be hopping outside of the county, and then we'll give them the all clear. If you are in Beaufort County, though, and you're like, oh, I missed that storm, just be aware there is a, a line of maybe 50 to 60 mile per hour winds just off to your west, and those will start approaching your area as we go through about the next 15 to 30 minutes, already to about Ridgeland. Look at that line right now, uh, right in the midst of this severe thunderstorm warning. There it is. Uh, and that's just a pretty linear line of thunderstorms that will go racing across I-95, but could still be producing some winds, maybe uh, about 50 to 60 miles per hour. Uh, there goes that thunderstorm that earlier was the same one that produced the tornado in Pembroke, large hail in Effingham County and also into Bryan County, and then some stronger straight line winds, and then it did prompt a couple tornado warnings as we went into um, parts of Jasper and Beaufort County. So uh, there it is, uh, this tornado warning is going to very likely expire at 7 p.m. And then we can take you back here to look at the setup across our area. Severe thunderstorm warnings go all the way down to Long County. The tornado warnings in Beaufort County, but that cell again, uh, pretty much about ready to exit that area. Then just tons of lightning and also those stronger winds lined up from a little sliver of Hampton County down through Jasper County, uh, Effingham County, and then all the way down into Long and Wayne counties is where that line of uh, gustier winds is at. But notice how uh, down in that area there's no warning, so the winds there are probably about maybe 35 to 45 miles per hour where farther to the north, what we have is a ton of lightning and those stronger straight line winds. And we just have about two and a half minutes now left in this tornado warning for Beaufort County. Then that area will be uh, very likely given uh, pretty much the all clear and we'll be able to um, sort of just focus in on some of the wind that is going to come sweeping across our area. Could get kind of loud out there uh, as this line moves through, but that's just uh, mainly stronger straight line winds. Uh, not expecting really, we'll watch it closely, but this is pretty much just a strong straight line push of winds versus uh, sort of the spinning thunderstorms that we had earlier that did produce some damage, especially around Pembroke and also up around the Allendale area. So we're gonna hang around here until the top of the hour. And then we have WJCL 22 News ready to go. Remember, we were the only station in Pembroke in Allendale, and we were literally there minutes after these tornadoes hit today. We know with our experience where to send the crews across our area when severe weather threatens. And obviously, uh, we were on the air covering Allendale, Northern Hampton County, as that destructive tornado went through. We were on probably a good 20 to 30 minutes or more before the tornado hit Pembroke today as that storm went through parts of Tattnall County. Then it slid southeast of Claxton and Daisy and then produced that damage around Pembroke. Large hail into Bryan County. Uh, that did extend into Effingham County. And now here we are at the current hour coming up at 7 p.m. and looking at a line of thunderstorms here of very strong thunderstorms that are severe. So right there we go within these red lines. That is a tornado warning. Less than a minute left in that. And then this line will push through the area. 
So as we go through the next uh, about 30 minutes or so, we'll have WJCL 22 News coming up. Uh, we'll have Shannon, Greg, myself, Melissa, to really break this entire day down. And uh, once we're still tracking thunderstorms this evening, what we'll have is a lot of cleanup in the days ahead. We were showing you those videos, some damage, a little bit of structural damage across our area as well as uh, lots of downed trees. Uh, some work ahead of us, but tonight uh, still a severe weather threat as we go through the next couple hours. So these red lines will be disappearing here soon. This line of thunderstorms will not. That's going to approach I-95, push towards downtown Savannah, Bluffton. As you look outside right there, we're going to start to uh, sort of wind down our coverage and then build it right back up for WJCL 22 News at 7. We'll be right back. 